Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is October 15th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about El Nino. I'm going to talk about how it looks like it's more and more certain that an El Nino will develop in the equatorial Pacific over the coming months, why that's happening, and how El Nino, which is a natural variability related feature, interacts with human caused climate change in that the baseline global temperature is being forced higher by atmospheric greenhouse gas buildup. But since El Nino is on the hot side of the natural variability phase, that we tend to see peak warming years globally during El Nino years. Doesn't mean that human caused climate change is, um, or that the climate change is being driven by El Nino. It's just an aspect of the Earth's system that we tend to see the hottest years globally on the warmest side of the natural variability phase, which is during El Nino years despite the fact that the longer term trend, the decadal and multi-decadal trend of warming is being driven by an accumulation of atmospheric greenhouse gases, primarily carbon dioxide, which are primarily being added to the Earth's atmosphere through fossil fuel burning. So let's talk about El Nino. Over recent weeks, we have seen a very strong phase in the Madden-Julian oscillation along with westerly wind bursts in the western equatorial Pacific region, which has invigorated the downwelling of warm waters into the Pacific Ocean depths, which telegraphs beneath the surface of the Pacific Ocean and across the Pacific Ocean and increases the likelihood that these warm waters will well up in the eastern equatorial Pacific and in the central equatorial Pacific and begin to spread across the equator, spilling out Pacific Ocean heat into the Earth's atmosphere and generating the chain of, of climatological and weather events that characterizes El Nino. I'm going to go ahead and show you a a model run of, uh, reload this page, of, of the present Kelvin wave feature running beneath the equatorial Pacific. This, this slice is showing a, a section of ocean ranging from zero to five, 450 meters deep and showing temperature anomalies in this section. And what we are seeing is that temperature anomalies in the 100 to 200 meter depth range below the equatorial Pacific are really starting to spike with anomalies ranging from three to as high as now, looks like five to six degrees Celsius in the hottest spots. This Kelvin wave is really starting to look very healthy and a, a strong Kelvin wave is indicative of, of more impetus toward El Nino, as well as more impetus to a stronger El Nino. If this Kelvin wave continues to strengthen and we tend to see these, these, these ocean heat anomalies just below the surface really start to spike up, it's an indicator that not only are we likely to see an El Nino event, but, but that the El Nino event that is coming might be a bit stronger than we had expected. So just looking at some of the reports coming in from NOAA, I just like again indicate that this Kelvin wave feature is looking much hotter and much stronger than it has during past weeks. And, and this is causing NOAA to, or one aspect of, of, of the El Nino variable that is causing NOAA to increase its chances for an El Nino, NOAA at this time is saying that there's a 70 to 75% chance of an El Nino during fall or winter of, of 2018 or, or, or fall or winter, I'm sorry, fall of 2018 or winter of 2019. And, and this, this trend toward El Nino being driven by rising upper ocean heat anomalies, we're getting into a range of 
1.5 degrees Celsius above average in the 100 to 180 degree west latitude range. So these are these are very warm upper ocean heat anomalies, and this is helping to drive a, a predicted trend toward an El Nino event. Just like to note that we've had one, two, three warm Kelvin waves so far, and this present warm Kelvin wave is really starting to heat up. So, so this is helping to, to really drive the trend toward El Nino. It's also worth noting that the Madden-Julian oscillation is contributing to a, a number of westerly wind bursts, and we've seen consistent westerly wind bursts since late July and early August, as noted in this red box here, as indicated by NOAA. We've also um, noted the, some of these um, east, eastward propagations of these anomalous patterns have also been noted in a number of various other models. And, and we're seeing um, changes in outgoing long wave radiation that is also indicative of a, of a trend toward El Nino. So I'd just like to look at NOAA's prediction. Uh, NOAA stating that El Nino is favored to form in the next couple of months and continue through Northern Hemisphere winter of 2018 and 2019. And that's now a 70 to 75 percent probability, which is an upgrade from the, the more recent statements, last week's statement from NOAA as well. I'd just like to point out that the um, the NCEP CFSV2 models are not showing a strong El Nino in the forecast, looking more toward a, a moderate or mild El Nino, and and that the consensus is still trending for a moderate to mild El Nino, even though the chances for El Nino have been increasing. So something to keep an eye on. We are trending toward El Nino, and this will tend to help to push global temperatures higher if this does occur. We are seeing a stronger Kelvin wave than we have seen in the past iterations, so it might be that this El Nino might be trending toward a little bit stronger, even though we're not seeing that in the models as yet. i just like to also point out the present trends for the equatorial Pacific with sea surface temperatures tending to remain above average for much of the equatorial Pacific. And we're starting to see some hot spots in the eastern equatorial Pacific, although not that typical big bloom of much warmer than normal sea surfaces that you tend to see at the advent of El Nino. Uh, just like to also note, we do see some of these uh, very warm sea surface temperatures in the northeast Pacific. And we saw this preceding the last El Nino with, it, with very warm sea surface temperatures in the region of the Bering and Chukchi seas lending toward a lot of atmospheric heat transfer into the Arctic. This feature is something that we saw prior to the last El Nino, and it's something that we're sending, tending to see again is this hot pool, this warm pool of water in the northeastern Pacific. Uh, one last bit I'd like to, to talk about is that the present atmospheric temperatures, according to the global monitor of uh, NASA GISS, have been ranging above the one degree Celsius above 19th, above late 19th century averages. And if we do get an El Nino in 2018 through, through 2019, it's likely that these peak temperatures that were achieved during 2016 will again be challenged as the atmosphere again heats up cyclically uh, in conjunction with the El Nino pattern. As I noted before, the longer term trend of global warming is driven by accumulation of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, but we do tend to see peak years during El Nino periods with 1998 and 2016 being the notable examples of this rule. It's not and the and it's worth noting that the, the drop off post El Nino is not an indicator that the Earth overall is cooling off. It's just a cyclical pattern between natural variab variability, hot and cool phases. And if we're going back into El Nino, again, we're hitting a natural variability warm phase on top of the human forced climate change feature, 
which is why we would expect to see 